Hi, I'm State Representative Marsha Hahn from the 138th Legislative District in Northampton County. Welcome to Legislative Report. I'm here at the Pennsylvania State Museum to do a tour uh, with the Executive Director, David Dunn. As you can see around me, we have a lot of visitors, especially school-aged children that come in to tour the museum. And this will give you just a little bit of what they see when they're here and hopefully uh, encourage you to come out and visit the museum as well. I'm here with David Dunn, director of the State Museum in Pennsylvania, and we're going to start our tour. David, do you want to tell me where we're starting today? We're starting right outside of our brand new planetarium, and we're standing next to the moon rocks, which are Pennsylvania's uh, own moon rocks brought back from the 1969 and 1972 missions in which there were Pennsylvanias involved. Wonderful. Now I see we have here uh, astronauts from Pennsylvania, three yes, of them? Yes, uh, we have several uh, Pennsylvanians who are in space, and uh, Pete Conrad, Dion Buford, and Paul Richards were all from Pennsylvania. Great. Uh, where are we going after the... Uh, we'll be going like right through uh, the Life Through Time exhibit. That'll take us through our paleontology exhibit and our Mammal Hall, which is one of the icons of the museum. Great. Let's start the tour. Very good. Okay, David, we left the planetarium. We've moved on through the exhibit. Now we just came through, do you want to explain where we just came from and where we're at now? We came through the Life Through Time exhibit, which talks about the formation of the Earth and the various landforms that happened in its geological period, then the emergence of life on Earth, and then also in Pennsylvania, we get very specific about some of the landforms that are in Pennsylvania. And we're now in the Paleontology Hall, which describes some of the life during the Triassic period and the Jurassic periods. And I'm, we're standing in front of a, a model of a phytosaur, which was a late Jurassic period uh, creature that lived in Pennsylvania. And uh, this is part of the story of Pennsylvania's emergence as a uh, landform and some of the life that, that was in Pennsylvania. I know you have a lot of school groups coming through and I, I can hear this is one of their favorite sections and I think because of Jurassic Park really brought that uh, air to life for them and they can come in here and see these dinosaurs and actually see uh, some of the exhibits. So uh, do you want to explain anything else that's in this, this well, this, area? Uh, this gallery shows the kinds of animals that would have been in Pennsylvania during the uh, di period of the dinosaurs. And we'll move over next then to the mastodon exhibit where we have a full-size mastodon, a real skeleton on display. All right, great. Let's move over there. David, this is a pretty awesome creature here behind us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this? This is a mastodon that was found in Pennsylvania. It was uncovered in 1968, and our paleontologists went out and supervised the, the collection of the bones. And uh, this particular piece is about 85 or 90 percent complete. It is one of the most complete mastodon examples in Pennsylvania. We think it died around 10 to 12,000 years ago, and it was found in a peat bog up in uh, the area of uh, the Poconos. And uh, they exhumed it piece by piece and brought it to the museum, cleaned it up, and we decided to display the whole thing here last uh, two years ago and uh, we had a company come in and put together the framework that holds the bones together. And these are the actual bones. These are not fossilized. Because it was found in a bog, they were actually preserved as the bones. How does someone even know that that was a bone? Is, is there someone on a construction site? Or how would they even know what to look for? Well, it's just uh, very accidental and a fortunate accident most of the time where they come across these things. And fortunately, they're, they're, they have the good sense to call someone if they don't know what it is to find out what it is. And that's where the State Museum comes in. We have the expertise to identify what the bones are and then bring them and then put them on exhibit for the public to see. All right, that's very interesting. Is there anything else in this area that you want to show us before we move on? Well, we have a lot of different displays in here. The, we have a Tyrannosaurus Rex skull. We have uh, some real uh, Pennsylvania pieces that we found that are rather rare uh, from the late tri Triassic period. Uh, we have lots of models and videos that go with the, the exhibit and so people can come in and learn at their own space. We also have volunteers oftentimes in the galleries where we have stop and learn carts 
and uh, they talk about uh, the specific things in each gallery and present them to the public as they walk through. Do you have interactive uh, dis display displays throughout the museum? I know in the planetarium, and I didn't get to show that when I was in there, there were some. Are there any in other spots? We have them throughout the museum, and we're actually planning to put more in as we progress through each standing gallery redo. And uh, so the kids really like those because they can control their learning at their own pace. Great. Well, maybe when we get to the next display or the next that's an interactive, we can show a little bit about that. Okay, very good. Where are we heading from there? We're heading next to Mammal Hall, which has all the indigenous mammal species of Pennsylvania on display. David, this is one of my favorite exhibits. This is Mammal Hall. And I think this shows all the different parts of the state and different things that you might uh, find as you're traveling across Pennsylvania. I know behind us, it's a little dark in here, so I'm not sure how many exhibits we can show, but we have the black bears behind us. And I know as a member of the Fish and Game Committee, um, you know, we're dealing with the Game Commission a lot. We see black bears, they're out, they come mm -hmm. out and they trap them and move them to another part of the state. This might have even been a bear that was in Northampton County and moved to uh, Lycoming, did you say? They do, yes, Lycoming? that's Lycoming County. Okay, do you want to tell us a little bit about this exhibit? Well, this is Mammal Hall. It's one of the favorite galleries of our visitors too, so you're not alone. And uh, this actually shows a lot of the indigenous species of Pennsylvania uh, in the, uh, the, the modern period. We have the black bears behind us. And what is really neat about this exhibit is that each one of the vignettes that we have here, uh, the dioramas, has a real um, taxidermied piece in it. And it's also been very well researched to a specific location, a specific habitat in Pennsylvania. And it shows the, the, basically these animals at home in Pennsylvania. And it's kind of a petting zoo that, you, that doesn't move, uh, but you can come in and look at them at your, piece, at your own pace. And it's dark because we want to accentuate the actual displays themselves so that you're looking at them. Some of them are daylight, some of them are night, so the lighting is different in each one. And so the room is dark so that you can kind of concentrate on each individual diorama and get the full extent of it. We have uh, bobcats and beavers and groundhogs and skunks and deer and elk. Uh, just oh, about what, what's everything. What's in the case over there? Is that a bison? That's a bison, yes. And there's some subject of considerable debate on whether the bison was in Pennsylvania uh, because there's no archaeological remains of any buffalo in, in the state. So there is some discussion about that, even though we have Buffalo Crossroads, Buffalo Creek, uh, and a lot of different buffalo townships in Pennsylvania, we don't know of any buffalo uh, archaeological remains that are in the state. Well, I know in Northampton County we see a lot of the white-tailed deer, and as I said, the bear. Haven't seen any of the bison, so I'm not sure that we have any in Northampton County. But is there any other uh, exhibit in here that you want to point out? Uh, down at the end, do we have uh, the wolves? We have wolves, yes, which are coming back in Pennsylvania. We also have foxes. Uh, we also have the white-tailed deer, as you said. Uh, so all these things are, are animals that you'll find in Pennsylvania in their natural habitat. Wonderful. Uh, where are we going from here? Like I said, I, I love to tour this area, but I think if there's so much to see, we'll, we'll move on. We'll probably go down to, uh, out to the Ecological Hall and take a look at Pennsylvania's ecology and uh, see what is going on perhaps today with the Falcon on top of the, uh, the Rachel Carson building. We have a live feed in the museum from that nest. Well, hopefully we've shown enough in this hall that it'll want people to come out and tour the museum just to see this section as well. So let's okay, move on to the next good. one and see what else is here. Right this way. Dave, we left the um, exhibit over there. We're now at the Falcon Cam. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here? Well, the Falcon Cam is a live feed from the Rachel Carson building at 400 Market Street in Harrisburg. Uh, and it uh, shows uh, what, how the birds care for their young, how they feed them, and where their nest is. And it's a transfer of a natural platform that is very high that you'd normally find in the cliffs of Pennsylvania to a very high platform in a high building in Pennsylvania. And it shows how the falcons have adapted to the environmental change by building a nest on a, a, a brand new building. And uh, they're doing just fine. Okay, and were there little chicks in there? Did I see? Yes, they have a family in there. I think this uh, has four chicks in, in this particular family. And oft times when you walk by the building, you can see them fly in and out. And there's often bird watchers standing outside on the green across from the building with binoculars, watching them go back and forth uh, to uh, feed their family. Okay. Now, is this a is this live now, or was this recorded? This is a recorded from 2009. They'll be resuming the live feed 
shortly. I'm not sure what the uh, uh, the schedule is for that, but uh, when it is live, we do have it here at the museum. But there are more falcons. They're back. They're yes. they're thriving. Yes. They're healthy. Great. I think we're going to move around uh, down in this display, and you can tell us a little bit about uh, each thing as we go through here, and we'll just do a short walking tour around and we'll end up at the uh, center display. All right, well, Ecology Hall talks about Pennsylvania's ecology. It talks about the interaction between the plant species and animal species. And of course, it's all about human interaction as well because we do have a, a pretty good effect on the uh, environment as, as a species. And so we talk here about some of the uh, landforms uh, that we work at with marshes. Uh, we work at bir birds uh, that live there, the different animals. Uh, and we really take a look at all the things that inhabit Pennsylvania's wood, uh, woodlands and marshes and their grasslands. So this display shows the food chain? Is that That's right, what this yeah. is displaying? How, uh, it shows how complicated the food uh, chain is and a lot of them lead up to uh, man, of course. Uh, and these are the kinds of things that would have been on the diet of the Native Americans in the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. Okay. Back here we have uh, birds of the marsh. Yeah, we have a, an incredible collection of, uh, of bird mounts and models, all of them from Pennsylvania. Uh, our natural history collection is about uh, 58,000 pieces in the collection at this point. So we have probably the, the finest collection of Pennsylvania birds and mammals uh, anywhere in the state. And these are some samples of those uh, that you'd find commonly on a marsh in Pennsylvania. Yeah, the red-winged blackbird. I, I think you see that sometimes other places other than a marsh. That's I right, yeah. They, they do like to nest in, in grass, and uh, they have a very distinctive uh, call when they're out there that most people will recognize in Pennsylvania. This is interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen any of these in Pennsylvania. Uh, blue herons are actually very common in Pennsylvania, and uh, those, those really do like uh, moving water and uh, they like a marsh where they can sort of hide at night and then come out and do their fishing during the day. What part of the state would you find? They're all over the eastern part of the state and I've seen them also in western Pennsylvania as well. I guess I haven't been out to enough marshes. I have to maybe take that up and, <laughs> and go see if I, I can I find one. I saw one take off on my way home last night uh, where 283 crosses a, a marsh. There was one that flew right over uh, the, the roadway as I was going home. I'll have to be more aware of my surroundings. <laughs> And that's one of the things we like people to think about is you can come to the museum and see the displays here, but you need to think about where can you find this in real life? You can go to our state parks, you know, the, the Department of uh, Parks and Recreation, DCNR has great parks out there. They have interpretive centers. And this is just one area that you can actually come and see things. And uh, we hope to renovate this gallery with some of those partners and then give people the incentive to go out and see the real thing somewhere, not just in a museum setting. Oh, and that's, that's wonderful. Well, here we have mink upon muskrats. Do you want to explain that? Well, they're, uh, they're both a, a member of the weasel family, and uh, these are some models that we have uh, showing them in a natural habitat. These are woodland creatures that are out during the winter, and that's why they have their fur. They don't uh, hibernate like some of the other uh, mammals that we have in the state. This is a, uh, a sculpture, actually, that was entered in the, uh, uh, an exhibit that we have every year. We'll be doing the 46th annual Art of the State exhibit this year. And this was one of the entries where it shows uh, an artist put together a whole series of frogs piled upon each other. I'm not sure you would see this necessarily in nature, but, it, nature, but it's really a fantastic sculpture. Uh, the kids really love this, and most of the adults like it too, because it's kind of whimsical with the frogs uh, piling on, as it were. Dave, a little early in the tour, we saw the mastodon, and I had asked you about the dig and how they found the bones. And this display seems to show some of that. Can you explain a little bit about this, this is display? This is a uh, typical archaeological discovery. Uh, and it's of a, a rock shelter where there's an overhanging rock and Native Americans lived underneath it for a time. And this is just an example of the kinds of thing that the, our archaeological division gets into. We are the Commonwealth's archaeology and we are the uh, repository of last resort for all things that are dug out of the earth or found in waterways. And so we have a huge collection of over five million objects in, in the State Museum. Uh, and this is the kind of uh, scientific research that's done to actually label pieces, put dates on them, put locations on them, and put a culture value on them as well. 
And uh, this is just a sample of the exhibits that you can see here at the State Museum that shows that. And we also have an archaeological team that goes out to different sites and does uh, actual archaeology. We do it at Fort Hunter every summer. We're going to be doing one at Effort of Cloister this summer as well. So we have a number of different projects that are scattered throughout the state where our team actually does this field research for the archaeology in Pennsylvania. All right. Well, thank you. I believe we're moving on to Gettysburg. Civil War. Yep. Civil War. Yep. All right. Off thank to you. the Civil War. David, we've just moved into the Civil War Museum. Um, and I know the Battle of Gettysburg is having a huge celebration in uh, July. It's their 150th anniversary. And I was here a few weeks ago and this wasn't finished, so I'm really impressed at all the work you've done here. It's a great exhibit. Maybe you can just walk us through and show us some of the things that you have here from the Civil War. Sure, this is, exhibit is called Objects of Valor, which is a commemoration of Pennsylvania's participation in the war and how they, they commemorated the war. Uh, everyone realized how important the Battle of Gettysburg was and how uh, important a place Pennsylvania's uh, people served in the, the war. And so we decided to do a, an exhibit that pulled some of the things out of our collection. There's over 230 objects in this exhibit and put them out on display, many of which who had never been displayed before. We have great things like the uh, uniform of uh, General John Geary, who uh, was from Westmoreland County. Uh, and he served in the Civil War, later became governor of Pennsylvania. And he was six foot five, and it's one of the largest uniforms we have in the collection. And the painting behind me shows him in that uniform on horseback. Okay. And uh, one of the neat things that happened after the, the war, for the 50th anniversary, there was a reunion that was held in Gettysburg. And we have a case that's devoted to that. Uh, and we have the iconic image of the Confederates and Union soldiers uh, shaking hands over a hedge and to commemorate the battle and uh, that was a really big deal. The Boy Scouts came to Gettysburg and, and acted as helpers for all these uh, veterans who showed up 50 years after the war, many of them in their 60s and 70s by that point and it would have been the last time they ever would have gotten together. together. And uh, we also have then the huge Rothermel painting here which is 16 by 32 feet and it was commissioned by the state legislature in 1866 and uh, Peter Frederick Rothermel was the artist who painted the piece and it shows the high point of the Confederacy just before the battle was decided on July 3rd, 1863. This was of course the culmination of Pickett's Charge, one of the biggest battles during the day. Uh, this painting traveled all over the United States and ended up at the first State Museum, which opened in 1905 in what's now the Ryan Office Building, and then was transported here in 1964 and was in this position when the, this museum opened in 1965. And one of the questions everyone asked when we were here touring is, how did you get that in here? It actually, uh, it, it rolls up uh, to get it in here, and uh, that's the way it traveled as well. And we have pieces of the original frame and the, uh, the, the stretcher in part of the exhibit here when it traveled all over the United States and London. Great, that is a beautiful painting. Now what do we have over here? We have the cannon shells. The cannon shells, again, is a, it's an exhibit that is intact, and it, it's actually exactly the way it was displayed right after the battle. Uh, we have pictures of this group of objects uh, and again it was purchased by the Pennsylvania legislature and came into the State Museum's collection and the curators who did a great job with this exhibit decided to display it exactly as it is in the picture and when we went to put together the display every single one of the shells was still in the collection after 150 years which is kind of remarkable. And where does a collection like this come from? This was purchased uh, by the state legislature from collectors in Gettysburg who went around on the battlefield and collected it and then opened many museums in Gettysburg as the tourists started to come in and see uh, where the battle had taken place. Uh, we also have some other important things such as General Meade's chair from his headquarters. Not very much of a chair, but considering how it was used, it makes it rather famous. Uh, we also have uh, a, a little bit of the history of the painting, the Rothermel painting, uh, with a picture of uh, Peter Frederick here. And he did a lot of research before he did the painting. And one of the things he collected was a drum that had a bullet hole in it. And this is actually was a drum that was picked up on the battlefield. And that drum appears in the painting between the private in the middle. You can see with the white shirt in the painting, there he's straddling a drum with a bullet hole in it and that is this drum. 
Now we had talked about some of the interactive uh, displays that you have. Is this one of this them? This is one of them. This actually, you can, you can take a tour of the painting and uh, it'll take you anywhere you want to go on the painting. Uh, you can choose between the scene. It tells you who's in the scene. Uh, you can explore the painting, uh, the artist. Uh, you can, it'll, it'll bring up everything that you need to know about each thing. And over here, you can pick a, a certain piece and this will bring up the, here's the, 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 the display, the display and, of, of Sills in the middle with the drum between his legs there. Now, Private Sills, of course, didn't actually ever exist. He was uh, representing all of the Union privates who were at the battle that day. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next display. There's so many things to see in here, and I know uh, we, have a, we a, have a lot to see in the whole museum. <laughs> yeah, this, so. this takes a lot of... Uh, exploring in this gallery because again we have such fine things. This is a, a, a case that's just filled with presentation swords. Oft times the men would go out and purchase a, a very fine sword to present to their officer who led them in battle and uh, these were very much treasured by the officers and the men. Uh, and we have a very large collection of these in the State Museum and this is just a sample of uh, uh, about eight of them that we have in the collection from about 35 or 40. That, and we'll be rotating things in and out of this exhibit to keep it fresh. This is, will be a standing gallery exhibit uh, probably for the next decade or so. Great. We have a portrait of a general. Yes, this is uh, George uh, Gordon Meade, who was the uh, Pennsylvanian, who was the general in charge at the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, he and his son were both uh, very heavily involved with the uh, directing the Union Army during the Battle of Gettysburg. Okay. I think we're going to move on to the next exhibit. I'm hoping this is enough to have everybody <laughs> curious and, and interested in the Civil War. And they're all going to head to Gettysburg this summer, so I'm looking forward to that. Is there anything else in here you want to show us before we head to the next well, exhibit? Well, we do have some private, uh, we have general things, but we also have some very personal things from privates and other people. We have a, a kepi with a bullet hole in it. The guy wore through the rest of the uh, um, the rest of the, uh, the battles that he was in, and he kept it as a piece of good luck. And we also have a, a full case over here that's filled with another soldier's things uh, that he actually was in the war and wore these things. Uh, uh, and these are the real uniform the that, real they, that he wore, yes. Amazing. David, I was talking about all the school groups that come in uh, to the museum, and we have a lot of them coming in. And I noticed this group behind me is from Nazareth Intermediate School, and they're here touring today, and they happen to be from the district. So you want to say hi to everyone back home? Hi. And we're looking, they're looking at the display, and David had mentioned a, a cap in here with a bullet hole in. Uh, you want to tell the students about that cap? For well, the, the cap was worn by a Civil War soldier, and during a battle, a bullet whizzed right through the top of his cap and put a hole in it. And we have that cap on display. He kept wearing the same cap throughout the whole Civil War and uh, because he thought it was a good luck charm. And he survived the war, and in 1915, he gave the cap to the State Museum of Pennsylvania so we could put it on display so you could see it. So that's a long story of a cap with a hole in it. Well, Mrs. Fatzinger said that they just started studying about the Civil War in Gettysburg. Yeah. Do you know what anniversary this is for Gettysburg? Did you study that? Yeah. Okay, it's the 150th this year. So it's a good time. So this summer you can take a trip out to Gettysburg and tour the actual battlefield. But we have other things that we want to see, as I'm sure that you do as well. So we're going to move on to our next display. Have a good time, and I'll see you over in the Capitol later. David, as we're moving on to the next exhibit, I see we have a volunteer here. Can you explain to us what she's doing? Celia is doing a stop and learn cart that is of the Civil War because it's right next to the Civil War gallery. And it allows kids to handle and learn reproductions uh, of things that soldiers would have carried during the Civil War. It gives them a nice hands-on experience uh, of things that the uh, very common objects that would have been handled by every soldier that marched during the Civil War. What are some of the items? They, they have the, uh, the mess kit? They have it looks a mess like. kit, they have a pipe, they have a knapsack, they have a blanket, they have cartridge pouch, all the things that you needed as an accoutrement to be a soldier during the Civil War. Okay, now I noticed behind us we have a Conestoga wagon. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this display? Well, the Conestoga wagon, of course, is one of those iconic things that uh, Pennsylvania is famous for. 
And the Conestoga wagon was a freight wagon, and you notice it has a bowed bed on it so that when it goes up and down hills, the cargo doesn't shift. And there's a whole lot of different folklore. Uh, this was invented uh, or developed in the Conestoga River area of Lancaster County and eventually was made uh, for Braddock's troops to go west during the French and Indian War, was a very great freight carrier during the Revolutionary War, and by the time of the Civil War was pretty much outmoded because the roads had improved. Uh, but it's, it's one of those things that Pennsylvania is famous for, just like the Pennsylvania rifle, uh, the Pennsylvania German culture, all those things uh, are very uh, iconic Pennsylvania objects. And we'll be doing an exhibit of Pennsylvania's icons uh, that'll be opening in 2014 or 2015, and that'll be a new introduction to the museum. Well, great. I look forward to that, and hopefully I can come back and do another tour. But I want to thank you so much for your time. You're quite welcome. I appreciate welcome. giving us the tour, and I'm hoping it brings a lot of people out to the museum to see all the fine gems that you have here. We hope so, too. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Now I'm with the Executive Director of the Pennsylvania Historical and Museum Commission, Jim Vaughn. I just had a wonderful tour of the museum with David and showed us a lot of the exhibits here and I want to thank you for your hospitality. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about what uh, your commission does? I do, thanks, and uh, we're delighted that you're here today and I want to invite uh, all of your viewers and constituents to think about coming to visit the State Museum. Uh, in addition to the State Museum, the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission is responsible for the State Archives, the State Records Center, we also have about 40 uh, museums and historic sites around the, around the state. And uh, we also run the State Historic Preservation Program so, and the State Historic Marker Program. So almost anywhere you go in Pennsylvania, you're going to see some uh, evidence of our work. And we, we hope it enriches your uh, understanding of Pennsylvania and your enjoyment of it. Is the State Marker Program different than the, the federal? When you go out and you're traveling around, you see a lot of the, the markers. So how do yours differ? Well, ours are, ours are uh, the markers about so big that you drive by on the highway. By the way, you, you can now uh, access them on your, on your uh, cell phone so okay. that you no, no longer need to try to read them at 60 that's, miles an hour. That's good. Uh, and, um, and it'll also point you to other ones that are nearby. Okay. But um, the, uh, our, our marker program, anybody can nominate a site uh, to become a mar markered and then we have a public panel that decides each year which ones are accepted okay, and not uh, whereas the national your the, the national program is a national register and we also play a role in that by rec by pre-processing the uh, ones from Pennsylvania and then sending them on to the Park Service okay do you want to tell us a little bit about the display here behind us and Who's standing behind us? Well, that's a, that's a, a very large bronze statue of William Penn, the founder of Pennsylvania. And in fact, uh, the State Museum was originally called the William Penn Memorial Museum. And the name was changed a number of years ago uh, so that people understood that we were more than only a memorial. But, uh, but it was probably the reason this building got built, because there was a lot more, it seemed at the time there was a lot more political uh, clout behind the need for a memorial for William Penn than the, necessarily the need for a new state museum. Great. Well, again, I want to thank you. And as you can see, we have a lot of students that come out and tour the museum. And I hope that when this video shows, we'll get a lot of people that come out this summer and want to tour here as well as Gettysburg. We have the 150th anniversary of Gettysburg. So hopefully we'll be able to promote Pennsylvania and all the travel and tourism parts of it and make sure the museum's a stop along the way. Well, so, we'd, we'd love to have more visitors. We're all about Pennsylvania. Great. Well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for watching Legislative Report. We were here at the State Museum in Pennsylvania. If you have any questions about this tour or any other state issues, please give my office a call. My contact information will follow the closing of this show. Thank you again.